Hello, everybody. Episode 300 we are here today with Missions Incorporated, the podcast of Practical Missions Cohort. And today our episode, after a a little bit of a pause there, which we'll talk about briefly in the update today. uh, But in our episode today, we're going to look at a field report from Italy looking back over the first quarter of 2023 at the Lord's uh, service here in the country of Italy. Uh, So it's been a while since we've been in the studio for this uh, ministry, Missions Incorporated. We've been doing stuff still for the Italian outreach over here. Uh, But just with numerous things going on, haven't been able to be in the studio. So it's good to be back. It's good to be back here and finally get to episode 300, kind of a monumental moment. 300 episodes later, uh, this particular podcast uh, started years ago just as a way to radio back uh, to ministry partners and friends, a way to keep them informed, keep them updated, share the latest happenings of what God is doing uh, in our midst as we're serving here in the country of Italy, as well as uh, to give instruction and teaching to biblical missions, evangelism, and these kinds of things to exhort and encourage uh, the body of Christ and all of our ministry partners. So here we are, 300 episodes later. Uh, Feels good. It's good to be uh, back in the studio. And uh, with today's episode, I just wanted to To mention that it's probably a good idea, uh, something you can do together with your family, a a sort of uh, family uh, devotions, if you can imagine. So if you do your family devotions, normally if you're a family, you you open the Word together, you you read a passage of Scripture, uh, you pray together, sing a song perhaps uh, on a regular basis. And this is a way to mix it up a little bit, and you can read uh, our newsletter, which we send out. The hard copy uh, looks like this, but this we'll be going through today, this, uh, this hard copy which went out. Uh, So you could read that together with your family, or you could listen in together uh, through this podcast, or watch and listen uh, together as a family, just to mix it up, make it different, make it interesting, uh, your family devotions, add some spice to it a little bit, and also hear about what God is doing in another place, and find tangible ways to be praying for a ministry to another people in another place. Uh, So that's the idea behind what we're doing today in episode 300, kind of getting back to our roots of just simply sharing field reports, the latest going on, incorporating people into the Lord's work here in Italy, and we'll be teaching and exhorting uh, along the way as well. Let me run the introduction and uh, then uh, a couple quick things and we'll get right into uh, our topic for today. All right, if this is your first time joining us, my name is Jesse Schreck, uh, founder and director at Practical Missions, uh, the cohort uh, here in the country of Italy, uh, to evangelize the lost, make disciples of Jesus Christ, and see biblical Italian churches planted uh, here in this country. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into why we're in Italy uh, during our, our reading of the field report today, and we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail, why this is an important ministry, why there's a need for the gospel in Italy, and, uh, and how you can uh, play a part, and if you are a ministry partner, how you are playing a part, and you're tangibly involved in the Great Commission, in particular here in the country of Italy among these people here. I don't have any announcements today because uh, today is kind of one giant announcement in the sense, uh, looking over uh, the field report, the newsletter, uh, we're talking about all kinds of different things there. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. I'll share it on the screen here for those who tune in and watch Practical Missions Cohort. Here is uh, the actual uh, newsletter, first quarter. You see some pictures here. Uh, So... I'll talk briefly about the pictures, and then what I want to do is uh, jump into a Bible verse uh, to kick things off uh, for today. So here's a a picture from uh, Cornelius' seventh birthday. We had the homeschool families uh, uh, that we're now in a co-op with here uh, in our area, uh, all together uh, to celebrate the birthday uh, that day, and we did an activity together. And uh, so they took a photo of us uh, as a family, which is nice. Uh, Over here on the left, uh, there's a photo of uh, Jerry V., my wife, and Cornelius and, and Beatrice, uh, in the city of uh, Venice, which is not far from where we are here, and that was a day when the homeschool families went to see a museum, and we're all there together. And uh, there's a picture then of the homeschool families uh, here below as well, uh, four of those families together uh, for that trip to the museum. One of the families lives in the the town called Murano, which is where they make the famous glass. Uh, they're actually in the glass making business family project for a long, long time, I guess. And they have their own little boat just to get around because they don't have a vehicle, a car, so their car is a boat. That's how they get around, and the kids had a fantastic time uh, getting a ride in the boat from going from one piazza to another, and, and then the, us parents, we just met them over there. Uh, yeah, one of the dads of uh, the kids obviously was driving the boat, but one of the kids, I think the older ones, got to also uh, navigate a little bit and have his first experience uh, on a boat. A couple photos here as well of uh, basketball. This is our son Cornelius had a, a rare occasion to be among the professional Venice team, uh, where also a friend of ours plays for that team. And his son plays together with Cornelius. But great photo they took during uh, one of the games there 
where there's actually an opportunity to uh, for the kids to accompany the professional players out onto the courts for the whole opening ceremony. And really, really special occasion there to see Cornelius uh, with um, with the pros. Really amazing. And then here's a picture. Uh, you can't really see it well in this, obviously, but a picture there of uh, Cornelius' entire basketball team all together. And uh, they just had another game yesterday. Very exciting stuff. Uh, an advertisement of sorts here uh, related to PMC, the vision trips, which we'll talk about just moment in, in a brief moment. And then a beautiful quote here from Charles Spurgeon. He says, God is never more glorified than he is by the believing confidence of his people when difficulties seem to come in the way. And that was a, a meme that we put out, a, a, a word of encouragement on um, the Italian cohort, social media places and things like this, also in our email uh, list. Uh, just something very encouraging that we came across and very timely, timely, I believe, for this season of life where so many of us are encountering numerous difficulties and just uh, observing the world around us and all that's going on. Uh, very encouraging to just remember that God is really glorified when when we have that believing confidence, when we're trusting in Him in the midst of difficulties as they come upon us, uh, knowing that He's Lord over it all and He has His purposes. Uh, as well as uh, photos here, we have uh, just a, a picture of this podcast, uh, Missions Incorporated, uh, the new logo for the Practical Missions Cohort Academia, teachings on missions and evangelism and church planting in Italy. And then uh, our, the track that we put out for uh, the season of uh, Easter, which is a, a big holiday here in the country of Italy, uh, though very, very few people understand what Easter is about and know personally uh, uh, the one who's Lord uh, of that holiday in the first place, uh, Jesus Christ, the one who did rise from the grave. Uh, so, And then also here we have a picture, uh, lastly, of uh, one of the, the, the media ministries here in Italy, uh, Vera Vita, uh, an, an exhortation that we did there from First Thessalonians. Uh, a little while ago. So that ministry is continuing to grow, and uh, there's uh, a couple photos related to that. Let me go ahead and get into our Bible verse. Those are our photos. Uh, the Bible verse, a uh, brief exhortation from the Word of God, and then we'll we'll go ahead and read through this together and uh, give some exhortation and, and words uh, along the way. Our exhortation for today uh, in this episode comes from Psalm number 121, Psalm 121, verses 1 to 2, and we read this. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? The psalmist asks. He asks himself, from where does my help come? My help, he says, comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And uh, it's good for us to remember here this uh, today, this reality that disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, we have God's help in all things. Uh, we don't just have some random help from someone who's uh, able to come through some of the time, in in most of the time, or, or most of the way, not always fully come through, but we have someone who can come through for us all the time perfectly. We have the Lord of Lords, the King of all kings, the one who's reigning over everything, the one who's omniscient, never learning a new thing. He has his plan, he's unfolding his plan, and if we are uh, disciples of Jesus Christ, we're born of the Spirit of God, we're united to Jesus Christ, we belong to Jesus Christ, we're His property that He purchased with His own blood, with His own life, we're very dear to Jesus Christ, if that's our reality. And uh, our help is comes directly from Him. We don't have the vain imagination, vain thinking, hoping that someone will come along and be able to help us. We don't have a God of our own imagination that we we hope can come through and we, we say a little prayer, we light a little candle and hope for the best, perhaps. No, we have a God who's actually entirely present with us. He's given us His Spirit to dwell within us. He's never forsakes us, never abandons us. Though we fall and we fall into sin and we get trapped all the time, He sets us free. We are liberated. We're new creatures in Christ, and He has good intentions for us. He's ready and able and willing to help us. And especially, we find this to be true, that our help comes from the Lord, the One who made heaven and earth. Especially, we find this to be true when we're living for Jesus Christ, when we're living for God's glory and we're, when we're living for His honor, truly, especially then, He's coming through and He is our help in all areas of life, in every situation, and all that we're going through, He's there and He's willing to help us. So we have the one who made heaven and earth, the one who gives us breath, the one in whom we move and have our being. Uh, this one is our help, the God of the universe, the one who's present in every place. Uh, remind yourself of that today. Uh, there's many going through difficult times. Uh, we encounter it over and over over here on, in the country of Italy, and we'll get into it in a little bit in this newsletter as we read through it. Uh, but so many people are bewildered. So many people are just 
confused and dazed and overwhelmed. They begin to find out some of the things that are actually going on in the world and they're overwhelmed. They're, they're awake, so to speak, but they're in despair. It's not enough to just be awake and aware of some of the madness going on in the world. Uh, we need to be awake to the madness going on in the world, but we need to know the Lord of all lords. We need to know the King of all kings as well. When we're born again, when we're united to Christ, uh, now we're also, we're, we're saved, we're redeemed, we have that blessed hope, as Paul referred to it, uh, that this is not everything here and now, that God is Lord over it all, He's working through it all for our good, for His glory. We have that wonderful confidence and blessed hope as we live this life. So many people are awake to all the despair, everything going on in the world, but they have no hope. They have no uh, confidence. They All they see is it's just so bad, it's so terrible, it seems so evil and this and that. But in, until you're saved and united to Jesus Christ, until you're uh, in right relationship with God, it is all despair and there is no hope. But for the one who's united, we can still walk confidently. Yeah, we see the madness in the world, but we also see the sovereign hand of God at work in it all. And uh, it's from that individual there, from our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, the King of all kings. It's from Him. It's from God where our help comes. He made heaven. He made earth. He says He made it with the power of His Word. He spoke the world into being. And with the power of His Word, He sustains the world still today, day after day, bringing all things forward uh, to the glory of his name. And uh, it comes to mind a, a wonderful quote that I heard from Charles Spurgeon uh, just recently, uh, but I can't remember it right now. Uh, I'll have to share it. If you get our newsletter or our email updates, I'll probably share it in an in a email coming up soon uh, because it's very good. It has, has to do with that reality here that uh, he brought our world into being, he's sustaining it, and it won't end until he's done with what he's doing in this world. Something to that effect. Uh, but he said it very well as he often as he often does. So so that's our word of encouragement for us today from Psalm 121. We have help. We have a very real help. We have help from the best help that's imaginable. That's your reality if you're united to Christ. Great confidence can come from that. But just ask yourself, consider, as you look back over the last few days and the last season of your life, where have you been looking for help? Have you been going to your maker for the help that he desires to give to you? Or have you been seeking out your own means and solutions to where you need help? Uh, go to the Lord. He's willing and wanting to help you. He wants to be your everything, and He is able to change any situation you're in just like that. I was reading this morning the reality of the disciples on the boat, the waves are rocking, the wind, the storm. They are terrified. One word of Jesus, boom, totally calmed the storm, and they were no longer afraid of the storm. Now they were afraid of this man. Who is this? They said, who is this guy? It's God, and God is with you, and He's Lord over all. He can change your circumstance from this to this, in just a second, like that, because He rules over it all. So take comfort in that. If you're a disciple of Christ, be comforted, be encouraged, be motivated, be exhorted to live fully. Don't hold back. Live fully unto the Lord today in light of that reality. Okay, back to our newsletter. Section one here has to do, uh, is just a personal update, family update. We'll read this to start things off. Hello, dear friends and partners. We write today from Italy as the spring weather has finally arrived in the north. Uh, the last couple of months have been challenging as we have battled illness almost constantly in our family. We have experienced highs and lows. Uh, it truly has been uh, tough with, uh, with the illness, my wife in particular, I don't know what's going on. I would ask you to pray for, for Jerry because she's been getting sick pretty much since January. She'll be sick for two weeks straight and then she'll get better and she'll feel good for three, maybe four days. Someone else in the family sick or we kind of pass something around through the house. And then after a week or so of feeling okay, boom, she's sick again for another week or another two weeks. That's been her reality pretty much the entire first quarter. And even after we drafted up this, this newsletter, uh, she was doing good for about a week, and then two days ago, she started getting uh, a runny nose, headache, and uh, and now she's got a lot of mucus. The la so the last two days, again, she's been sick, still carrying on, able to do what she needs to, uh, but she's just been battling sickness unbelievably uh, for these last uh, couple months, and it's it's been really hard on all of us, and it's hindered the ministry in a lot of ways. So uh, we invite you to please uh, pray for uh, my wife. That's That's been a, a hard thing for us, a challenging thing during this first quarter. The COVID emergency uh, restrictions in the U.S., we read here, seem to finally be ending, and we are planning a furlough as a family. Wow. Uh, we look forward to spending time with family, friends, and our brothers and sisters in Christ this summer, Lord willing. 
Uh, long have we desired to return to the U.S. to visit, but we have been uh, providentially hindered. So if you follow the ministry, you're aware that we decided to, since we had the COVID virus early on and then uh, we had antibodies and all that, and the science historically has always says that once you have that, you're, you're, you're pretty much good to go for, for the rest of your life. Uh, you know, we stuck with that, and, uh, and then I was having heart issues of my own when the vaccines were being forced and pushed on everybody. Since I had these heart problems and we had the virus, we decided not to go that route and just go by faith and, and, uh, and, and take the other route of not taking it. But that required us to not be able, since my wife is not a U.S. citizen, not be able to go to the States for a normal furlough. So we chose that path and we trust God, uh, but we've been wanting to get back for several years now. The board of directors for PMC actually decided that it would be a good idea for us to be back once a year to promote the mission, talk about the realities of Italy, get churches to see the need for the gospel in this country, and to incorporate people and get stuff going. Uh, and then along came this pandemic, and now since 2019, we haven't been back. So when we write here that uh, we're finally going to be going back, that that's big news. It's almost hard to believe and uh, now everything could still change, as we know. Uh, we had plans in 2020. We were supposed to go to the Philippines for three weeks or so to visit Jerry's family. She hasn't seen her family, I think, in 15 years. So we finally got tickets, and we were going to go back to visit them, spend a few weeks there. And uh, that's when this whole pandemic thing began, and we had to cancel that trip. I don't know when or if we'll ever be able to go back over there to the Philippines to visit and see her family. Uh, we do hope to be able to do that someday because her parents, or her dad in particular, is getting older. And um, uh, so that never happened. But And then we, we haven't been to the States since uh, 2019. And uh, here we are ready to go. They, they finally ended the COVID emergency stuff. Uh, May 11th is going to be ending. We, we have tickets and uh, we encourage you to uh, pray for us to find, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a moment, I guess, the lodging and everything else we need. But... Um, that could change too. Now there's potential uh, uh, the world war could break out again. There was just talk about something, an important building maybe uh, in, in Russia was just bombed or something. It could be a reaction. Maybe it's going to get nuclear and wild. <laughs> so we go by faith here. We got the tickets. We hope to be back in the States. Please pray with us that it works out. We really want to get back. We want to see everybody. I have family members who have not been physically well, want to see them, want to spend time, uh, have uh, churches, our home church we want to see, and there's been a merger. We want to meet all the new people. And we want to get around and visit all the different churches and believers and and talk about PMC, talk about what God is doing here in the country of Italy, and see more folks uh, able to uh, learn about how to get involved. Uh, so in any case, yeah, that's the plan. We have the tickets. We should be back. Uh, more to come on that in the coming weeks. But uh, if you are in Pennsylvania, if you're in New York, uh, please let us know. We'd love to meet up and, and see you, see your church, talk, share about missions, these kinds of things. Uh, so it seems like it's all coming together and we will be there uh, in the summer uh, this year. Uh, so praise be to God for that. Uh, thankfully, the winter, we read on here in the newsletter, thankfully the winter was rather uh, mild here near Venice. Uh, some people were predicting power outages because of the economic and energy crisis. But thankfully that didn't come into fruition. Our electric bills, however, have been outrageous. Normally we would spend about 100 to 150 euro every two months. But our last few bills were over 300 and once over 600. Mamma mia. The Lord has provided for us through a certain generous donor that has been privately giving to carry us through this. Uh, so someone who, who loves us and cares about us and wants this ministry to keep going forward has been contributing through PayPal uh, privately just uh, to us. So we, And that's been covering these bills for us. Without that, I don't know what we'd be doing right now. So uh, praise God. You know who you are, uh, the one who's been contributing to that. We thank God for you. And uh, you've truly been carrying us through this, this madness over here of recent. So praise be to God. Recently, we declare, uh, we celebrated Cornelius' uh, Chichi's seventh birthday together with the homeschool families here in our area. He's growing so fast. His first official school year uh, has been great. We're wrapping that up now, and he's got the exam coming up in, um, uh, in June. Uh, the exam for uh, the end of the year exam is what they do here. So you have to uh, understand the main things they require and, and cover those, but then you have your customized program that you do as well, and you're able to share about uh, the other things that he was able to learn and so on as well, and they'll test him on some of that. Uh, so by God's grace, we're learning the ropes of homeschooling in Italy. Our eyes have truly been opened to the beauty and the value of taking initiative to educate our kids with a Christian worldview. Chichi is also really uh, excelling at basketball and even had the chance to, again, be among the Venice pro team, as I mentioned when we looked at uh, the photos. Uh, but yeah, the homeschool uh, thing has truly been a great blessing. Man, I wish uh, I wish we knew about this way 
uh, years ago, although it's just now the time for our, our, our first son to, to go to school in this way. Uh, but uh, we have friends who didn't know, I think, about homeschool was an option. And it's great. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. And it actually, there's a community of other people, and we're teaching the Bible uh, to the families, uh, to the kids, to the parents. Great conversations, gospel conversations coming up as we do these weekly uh, meetups and so on. Great opportunities to testify. Jeremy's witnessing to the moms, and I'm talking to the dads, and uh, they're they're aware of the craziness in the world, but they have no one until now to point them to the gospel, the one who's Lord over it all, and the need for salvation and so on. So pray for these wonderful families. Pray for God to bless uh, those interactions, but uh, uh, it's a great, great thing going on, and uh, I pray to see other ministries and folks here in Italy getting involved in doing homeschooling as well uh, with kids. Plus, uh, it's the best way to get uh, in Italy. There are no Christian schools for the kids, so uh, it's up to you to uh, homeschool and give them the Christian worldview education and really disciple them. Uh, so a lot I could say about that, but I've spoke about it in the, I've spoken about it in the past a bit, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, we're just so grateful to God that we can do it here in Italy. These past few years we read on uh, since the start of the pandemic are kind of a blur now, but the Lord has sustained us through everything. It has been three years. It's hard to believe all the stuff that's gone on around the world, but also here in Italy, heavy-handed restrictions and everything else, uh, mandates. But it's, it's pretty much over. And so praise be to God. We've gotten through it by God's grace. We experience many setbacks, we read here, but also significant advancements. God is faithful. Many people are quite distraught here in Italy as these rapidly changing times are heavy and hard to process. In all our years in Italy, we've never seen more clearly the need for the gospel. No one likes these complex and disturbing times that we are living, but we believe that Jesus is Lord over it all, and He has a good uh, purpose in this. He really, really does. Uh, somehow, it is necessary to bring more souls to saving faith. Of that, we're totally uh, convinced. Uh, though we don't want this pandemic stuff to go on, though it's been a hassle, it hasn't been fun, uh, we're convinced uh, it's something that has been uh, necessary, and God is using it. People are waking up to the evils of the world, the craziness of the world, and their need for the Savior. That the Christian worldview is the only worldview that can make sense of all the madness that we're seeing and give the hope that we all need in Jesus Christ. So we read on, Never before has the world uh, been able to see the folly of the ways of man and secularism. Uh, it leads to total chaos. The Christian worldview alone can help us make sense of the madness. I, I just kind of said this. I forgot that I had written it here, I guess. The gospel alone brings forgiveness, salvation, uh, peace, transformation, renewal, human flourishing, and harmony. The current chaos all around the world is a great opportunity uh, for us all to rise up and help people understand their need for salvation in Jesus. In particular, we personally have found the presuppositional apologetic to be a great weapon in our armory for bringing the gospel to bear on the hearts of others in this time. Uh, so that's uh, that's something uh, I've been studying the last few years, the presuppositional apologetic, uh, reading things by um, uh, Dr. Jason Lyle from uh, the Answers in Genesis ministry, as well as Greg Bonson, uh, Cornelius Van Til. Wonderful, wonderful apologetic. If you haven't explored that yet, we definitely would encourage you to do that. Get right to the heart of the matter uh, with people to help them see how they need God, even to oppose God, how they can't even, they have no foundation to stand upon uh, without uh, the Christian worldview that they need to borrow from, actually, to make their accusations and so on. And, and try to stand against God. Uh, so wonderful, wonderful um, apologetic that we encourage you as, as well to consider. But yeah, ripe, ripe time for the gospel all around the world. Now's the time as, as Christians we need to really have our feet firmly planted, rise up to the occasion, open our mouths, and begin leading more and more people to the Lord. Uh, we're convinced the Lord is at work in a powerful way, and we'll see numerous souls coming to the Lord through this, through this time. Uh, before we jump into our next section, which will be church planting, I do want to share uh, something here uh, as a, a segment of sorts, uh, just uh, related to why we do missions in the country of Italy and why we need more missionaries in the country of Italy. How do we know that Italy needs more missionaries? How do we know that? This is the question that uh, we propose here. How, how do we know that? Number one, uh, we don't know one pastor in the entire country of Italy that is fully supported by his own congregation. Full-time pastors in Italy are getting funding from abroad. If pastors cannot be full-time with the support from their own congregations, then certainly missionaries cannot be sent out full-time in ministry to other nations and be funded uh, by, their, uh, by their own church. Let me go back because um, I didn't get to read that last one fully. 
to other nations and be funded by their home church, Italy still needs missionaries today so that one day they too will be able to contribute to the Great Commission. So if pastors cannot be full-time, uh, it's just not going to be possible that they can send other people out full-time to other countries to do ministry and contribute tangibly uh, to the Great Commission. They're in need of help here in Italy uh, to see churches established and to see more uh, uh, yeah, pastors trained and equipped. Much gospel work, we close here, is yet to be done in Italy, and millions of unreached souls have yet to hear the good news. We encourage you to partner with Practical Missions Cohort, and you too can make a difference and, and be tangibly involved in the Great Commission. More information always available at practicalmissions.org. And if you are partnered already in the ministry, thank you for being a part of helping make uh, helping to make a difference and impact uh, this country with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Desperate need for the gospel here in this in this land. All right, that was the uh, end of our segment, and now we'll go back to the the. Uh, the um, the newsletter, and then we'll look here at uh, the church planting section. With the spring weather upon us, we are ga- uh, again ramping up evangelism while also building relationships. The Lord continues to give us open doors to testify of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the kingdom. Most people around us are without hope and without God. Little by little, uh, as we engage individuals, the Lord is helping us so, uh, as we talked about even in our devotion uh, before starting today, the Lord is helping us um, to knock down the barriers they have raised against the knowledge of the Lord. The light of the gospel continues to reach into the hearts and minds of more souls every day. The media ministry continues to grow and increase. Distributions of gospel literature are continuing. Things are coming into place in God's timing. The only thing we are currently lacking is a band of more missionaries to join in on what God is doing. To this end, we keep praying, and we believe God is answering. And uh, when we say that, there is at least one family right now that has uh, filled out application and is working on the second part and has showed a a sincere and real interest in joining in on this work here in this city for these people at this time. And uh, we pray that that works out. And we're praying for you if, if you are that family. Don't want to mention your name just yet, but if that's you, just know we're praying for you on a regular basis as well, that God would continue to lead and uh, get you over here. Uh, the, the the work is a lot. There's much to be done, and uh, together we can do a lot. Uh, part of our trip to the States coming up will be also to see are there other folks uh, God has prepared that we can help get involved, uh, another family or maybe two, uh, to join in on the work here, to relocate and serve the Lord here in this in this place, in this time. Uh, to see this next church take form. Back to the newsletter again, uh, same section. Our U.S. military friends in Vicenza are now making plans. They're retiring and they're returning to the U.S. We are grateful for our time shared with them uh, through this season of life and thankful for our friendship that can continue from a distance. Currently, on the Lord's Day mornings, we are traveling uh, to visit and worship with different Italian churches. That's been a a good experience these last few months, just visiting the different realities. we, we write here, um, we are particularly grateful for new friendships in Padova and Vicenza. Uh, great folks there that we've really been appreciating. They are very accommodating to us, uh, welcoming to us, and we've had wonderful, wonderful conversations and mutual friendships and all kinds of things. So uh, we're, we look forward to ongoing friendship and maybe even some form of collaboration as the Lord leads. Uh, we are happy to have a place where we can comfortably bring new converts until uh, this next church plant officially takes form in the city uh, of Mestre, Mestre City. This is no small thing uh, we add here as well. Uh, so if you can imagine, uh, the average church in, in Italy is 10 to 20 people-ish, right? Very, very small. There's one church that we visited in a town not too far from here. And you show up and you walk in the back door and literally I feel like I could reach out my hand and touch the pulpit. I mean, you walk in the back door, there's seats immediately on your left and your right. Uh, so then there's like four on each side, maybe five, and then four rows. And uh, there's a variety of people. You can, It's hard to find. You come in as a family. You feel like, uh, uh, I'm overwhelmed. The uh, uh, squish is tight. Where am I going to sit? You put two, your wife and, your, and one kid over here and me and the other kid over here. And uh, it's very tight, very small. And you think to yourself, man, 
that's the reality for most churches. You, you, you kind of can forget at times what the reality is for most of the churches scattered throughout the country of Italy today, the evangelical churches. Uh, very small, very cult-like-ish. It very much reminds you of a, a cult or something like that. And you think of if they're doing evangelism and if, if there's like a couple families that are hearing the gospel, they're born again, they're saved, and they want to be part of what God is doing, they want to rightfully become members of the church, join in, they come in for their first time and they don't even know, there's nowhere to even sit down or it's, it seems so weird and so much like a cult. It's such an obstacle to an Italian person who dresses well, tries to present himself well all the time, a Very uh, has proper uh, food etiquette, the way he eats is very disciplined, certain things you just don't do. When it, it, half the American diet would scandalize the average Italian, for example, just eating while driving a car, like what in the world is wrong with you? Sit down properly and have a meal, take your time, right? And So I mean, it's just... That kind of mindset, and then when they think of church, they think of these mega structures as all they've ever known, these gigantic church buildings and stuff, though they're totally empty and void of the gospel today, and many of them have become museums, still in their mind, church, family, God, whatever, okay, they expect something of substance, and they walk into a little storefront, and it's totally jam-packed, and it's a weird group of people, and it, it, it almost scandalizes them. Uh, so, as I mentioned here in the newsletter, though, there's these couple churches where... Uh, we, we've made some good friendships and stuff, and, and, and we have that ability now. New converts here we can bring with us without shame, and, and it's a good experience for them to start their Christian life to see mature other believers who have been walking with the Lord for a long, long time and uh, in places where God is at work doing wonderful things. That's no small thing, as I mentioned here in the newsletter. So uh, we really are uh, thankful uh, to God for that. That's, that's been tremendous, if you can imagine. All right, uh, last section uh, will be PMC and then a few prayer requests to wrap us up for today. Practical Missions Cohort. PMC continues to dig in its roots and fortify its foundation for long-term impact in the country of Italy with the involvement of our brothers and sisters in the U.S. There are no short-term evangelism cohorts scheduled for the summer, but there is potential for a vision trip or two. Uh, before the end of the year to be organized. Uh, so we are excited to finally get back to the U.S. this summer, Lord willing, of course, uh, so we can talk about PMC and the Lord's work in Italy to as many groups and churches as possible, representing PMC and sharing about the, re the realities here and the ways to get involved. The door is wide open for the gospel to go forward in Italy. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There are few missionaries in Italy still today. And even the ones that are here, not all of them do church planning. And those who do church planning, uh, most, it seems, do what we call pastoral church planting rather than apostolic church planting. And I make a note here, uh, this is interesting. Uh, missionaries going to the jungles and the tribes still today, um, they don't do pastoral church planting. Their goal is to train national pastors to oversee the new body of believers and then leave the work of ongoing shepherding to the new plurality of elders that God has given the flock. This topic we will be teaching on more thoroughly in one of our lessons in the missions course at the PMC Academia. If you are interested in learning more about biblical missions, be sure to check out and take advantage of the free courses at uh, the Academia. All right, so a, a few things worth mentioning there. Just the, the key difference is really between pastoral planting and, uh, and apostolic planting. Apostolic planting is another way of saying missionary church planting. The idea is simply being uh, you go in, you evangelize people. You evangelize the lost. You go where there is no church. You go where there is no one reaching. Uh, like a tribe, for example. If you can, Most people, when they think of missions, they still think of the tribes and the jungles. You go there to these tribes. You go to these people unreached, and you evangelize. One way or another, any way, every way possible, you evangelize. God and the Holy Spirit, in His timing, converts, changes the hearts, causes new birth, brings people to life naturally like babies who are born. They desire the milk of the Word of God. They desire to be fed the Word of God. They grow in grace. Sometimes it goes quick. Sometimes it takes many, 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 many years. But that idea is the is the reality. And uh, they're, they're growing in grace. And then more people get saved. Disciples are made. Church it takes form and is planted. But the apostolic approach, the missionary approach, is not for the missionary to come and stay and camp out there the rest of his life and be their pastor. But his goal from the beginning, even before they start, is to go in, see God do this work, be used by God in the in the training of, of recognizing those that God the Holy Spirit has called and equipped and graced to oversee and to, to have that pastoral role, get them training, get them equipped, and get a plurality of elders, by God's grace, operating in their capacity and then serving in that role, recognized by the body of Christ there, that they these are the leaders, these are men called by God to, to, to lead and guide and so on. 
And then they're they're recognized as the new leaders of the church, and uh, they're given what they need. They have a foundation to continue growing upon for the rest of their life. And now uh, the missionary steps out, so the, God the Holy Spirit can accompany these folks, use them, and have them grow and begin their walk and, and serve there. Uh, so that's the typical missionary approach, apostolic approach. Pastoral approach is when you would simply go in and pastor and have no intention of leaving, have no intention of training and and having people take your place so you can get out, but just going and settling in and doing it. And that's been what I've noticed. It seems to be the common practice here in Italy, and that's a, a long discussion. There, 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 there might be some valid points like, well, Italy moves so slow that that's the only way that it works, and so on. But uh, and the other approach, the apostolic approach, you know, it's just uh, there's, there's no way that can happen, people say. And and so there's there's a lot to it, but it is what the approach that we see in the Bible. And uh, I think one of the key things, I'll just mention this, and we'll leave the rest for the course if you wanted to check it out later on. Uh, but one of the key differences might be in the mind of the average missionary who's had lots of training, lots of theological training, pastoral training, some of it formal, some of it not, but involved in and coming from mature bodies of believers and churches and so on. Uh, when he comes and he's training these folks and he sees how little they actually know, and he himself has been trained for years and years and grown and served and, and is still, the more he learns, the more he realizes there's still a lot I don't know. He's so far along and still knows how much he doesn't yet know and how much he's growing still. He can be tempted to think these people, they're, no, they're not even qualified. They're not at all. But in reality, they are qualified by God the Holy Spirit according to the, what the qualifications we see in Scripture. It's just they need a starting ground. They can't be dependent on the missionary forever. They need to get started and be recognized and, and laid hands on and so on at the right time and then allow them to grow in grace and, and, and mature as well and get started in that same process that you're in as a, as a, a pastor or someone in ministry uh, growing in grace and learning uh, year after year. You never stop learning in the school of Christ, right? Uh, so the problem comes along, though, when you have guys uh, in the jungle doing pastoral ministry, for example, and then you have places like in the States where there's long-standing churches, mature believers, I mean, hundreds of years old and lots of maturity and good stuff there. Uh, you could take a guy from the tribe in, who, who's been trained in pastoral ministry, he's been serving already together with two or three other elders for 20 years, let's say. You could take that guy who's fully qualified among his people in the jungle, shepherding them well, perhaps even only God knows, but much better than you do in, in the States, for example. That, that could be possible. Uh, okay, so you could take that guy and you could bring him over to the States. A little thought experiment here for us. And you could uh, drop him into a church, a mature church. Uh, I won't say the name of any church, but any any mature church uh, in the States. And you bring the tribe guy over there and he's, he's biblically qualified, but you put him in the midst of the church and they look around and they think, who's that guy at the pulpit? He's got piercings through his lips. He's got, you know, body tattoo stuff all over him. He's got hanging earlobes and stuff and... He's not even wearing a shirt. This guy's in it, and he, when he talks, I, he, he sounds like some kind of animal. What is going on? This is a scandal. Get him out of the pulpit, right? This, this is a thought experiment, but this could happen, right? He's biblically qualified where he is in his context. He knows scripture. He has godly character. Uh, he's been serving the Lord, preaching and teaching for years and years, and uh, shepherding people well by the grace of God. You put him, though, in another context, and people would think he's out of his mind. Now, the flip the, flip the experiment to the other side as well. You could take a pastor from the States, for example, and he's been in ministry 20, 30 years. He's qualified, uh, serving together with other pastors, shepherding the flock very well. And he shows up in the tribe, and he's got to fill in for uh, the other guy for a few months while he's uh, visiting the States. So let's say they do a swap here, churches. And uh, so he gets in the pulpit. It's uh, it's Sunday morning. They're, they're together to worship, and he's got this tribe of people there. And they look at him, and they see he's wearing a white shirt. They see that his buttons are popping out because his tummy is so big. And uh, and they see he's a little bit sloppy, right, and not well put together. And they also see he's got no muscle. They see that he doesn't even know how to skin a goat and feed his lunch afterwards. He doesn't even know what to do with the animals, how to prepare it and how to prepare a meal for everybody afterwards. He couldn't climb a tree and get his coconuts. What is this? Is this a girl? Is this really a man? What is it? He's got all this flab on his arms and his stuff on his chin. He's, he's not even in shape. They would be totally scandalized seeing a guy show up in a tie and a white shirt, looking nice, very sophisticated, with a PhD there to teach and preach. And But they see him overweight. They see him unable to do half the stuff that they normally do. He has no hand skills. He can't do anything to help the tribe in any tangible way. And they think, this is like a girly man. He's got no, he's got nothing he can offer us. I think he, I don't think he's qualified. Right? So they could be tempted to think he's not qualified for pastoral ministry, just like the ones in the States see the guy from the tribe with the piercings and, and no shirt on when he gets in the pulpit or whatever it might be, and they think, this guy's not qualified. We can't listen to him. The same thing could happen. The point of it is, uh, when it comes to missions, it's important to understand biblical qualifications for pastorals, uh, pastoral ministry. 
uh, those are fundamental. Often we bring in other qualifications, cultural qualifications of our own that don't necessarily mean anything at all. And I hope that thought experiment kind of can help you with that. So uh, bringing that back to the point, though, in, in Italy, we're somewhere in the middle. It's not a tribe like in the jungle, but it definitely doesn't have a long history of Christian presence. We're less than 1% evangelical here in this country, which basically means 0%. It's hard to find uh, solid Christian believers in the country of Italy. They're, they're not all over the place. The churches are, are very small and very scattered, uh, and that's still the reality uh, for today. So in any case, that's just a little foretaste of uh, what's coming up in that particular course uh, related to uh, missions, as well as the course related to apostolic church planning and missionary church planning and, and some of those key factors that do make a difference and are important to have a handle on when it comes to doing uh, missions work, in particular in a place uh, like the country of Italy. Last part here, we read uh, back to the newsletter. If you are a friend of the ministry, come on over and join PMC's newly forming online Discord community. Uh, the Italian Cohort is what it's called. The link will be in the description of the podcast. Uh, join us. Don't be afraid. Uh, we're a small group, like eight or ten people right now. Very small. Uh, but when we're in the States, this is something we want to see more folks join in on. All short-termers who come to serve can be given access to that. Great way to get inside access to different realities of Italy, uh, different things going on, ways you can be praying, uh, words of encouragement, all kinds of different stuff going on there. Nice little conversation for anybody who loves Italy, loves God, loves the Church of Jesus Christ. Uh, Italian people, come on over, join us. We'd love to see you in there. We're praying to see that grow. It's the best way to keep in touch with us personally and get inside access to all things uh, happening here in Italy. And uh, if you're a ministry partner, we just want to also mention uh, we thank you. You are the backbone of this ministry. We thank you for your sacrifice. We know it's not easy right now to give. Uh, we have, we, we're going through it as well. Groceries, uh, price of getting groceries has like doubled for us over here. Utilities, as we talked about, has like doubled. It's really hard to get by. So uh, just know if you are continuing to support, we are super thankful for you uh, uh, for, for doing that. We know uh, it's a sacrifice uh, to give to a ministry to people in another country that need to hear the gospel. But uh, we, we pray God bless you, that he continue to sustain you in every way. And we do uh, thank you for your love, your support, and your participation. It makes all the difference in the world. Uh, that being the case, uh, we are... Uh a faith-based ministry. So if you are not supporting the ministry and you want to be involved in supporting biblical missions, uh, you can definitely learn more uh, by checking out the website, practicalmissions.org forward slash donate. All the information you would need about contributing and becoming a monthly financial partner or giving a one-time gift is all available there. We also have currently some special needs. We need to make some uh, improvements to the studio, some new things we want to incorporate for the, 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 the media ministry for PMC, where we talk about Things like today, uh, all the things related to to missions and evangelism and, and church planting in the country of Italy, but as well as the Vera Vita outreach ministry, which is uh, significantly more uh, of an impact. Uh, it's having uh, on the uh, yeah the, the, as a media platform, uh, reaching all kinds of people. And we're getting people messaging us uh, from all over Italy through that ministry and uh, saying how they, they want us to pray for us. They don't have it. They can't find a, a good church in their area anywhere, and there is no church. I look and try to help them find a church. Sometimes there is no is no church. One guy in particular, his church stopped meeting because of COVID, and that was like three years ago almost now, and still hasn't gotten back together. Uh, I mean, unbelievable stuff going on. People. Uh, we're reminded that the need is tremendous in Italy. The, the work to be done here is, is still, uh, we're just scratching the surface, right? Uh, but in any case, let's close today with our prayer requests, and this will be the final thing before we, we wrap up. So have if you get the newsletter, you'll see these prayer requests here. And if you're listening or tuning in with family and friends, uh, we encourage you to uh, maybe jot some of these down. And each of you take a, take a moment during a, a time of prayer just to uh, go through this together. And uh, pray for us. We would super appreciate uh, your prayer. Uh, the money is important. Obviously, we need money, but uh, prayer as well. To carry on in a context like this, which is very similar to the context, uh, if you could compare it to Mordor and the Lord of the Rings, that fiery dark place where nothing grows and everything is dead and the, the air just causes you to, to faint and, and grow uh, weak at heart. That's the reality of Italy, spiritually speaking, and that's what missionaries like ourselves have to endure on a continual basis. So, Prayer is super important to us. Here's some ways that you can be joining us in prayer. Number one, coordination of furlough, flights, home and vehicle, family and churches uh, to visit, these kinds of things. So pray for us to coordinate that. We got the tickets by faith. We still need to pay for them. Uh, so if you can help us, it's about $3,250 or so for those tickets, four tickets there and back. Uh, so we need to pay for that. If you can help contribute, please uh, let us know. Uh, but uh, we need to find, uh, we may have a home to stay in. I think we do. Uh, not far. Uh, yeah, somewhere in Pennsylvania. Uh, still has to be worked out. So, But if, if you know anybody, uh, it could come through. It, it may not. If you know anyone who has a, a home that we could use, a private residence that we could use for our family, a missionary place, something like that, please let us know. I know for the time when we're in New York, 
Pastor Caleb has let us know there's a place that we can most likely use there uh, to stay in. But we're going to be back and forth mostly between Pennsylvania and New York. At one point, we need to go see my brother. I haven't seen him. He's never met my wife, never met my kids. We need to get down to Texas and see my brother. Uh, hoping to go to uh, Florida as well to visit uh, some friends there and uh, perhaps a church or two. Uh, so, but yeah, if you know of a place we can stay, please reach out and, and let us know. Let's talk. Uh, as well as uh, we want to spend time, pray for our time there with family. And we haven't seen family in a long time. And family members have been suffering illness, maladies. Uh, pray for our time with their family and also for new churches to visit and, and the supporting churches to visit them and all that. That would be awesome. Okay, next one is prayer request. Long-term missionaries to apply and get accepted and a new band of missionaries to form. Uh, so if, uh, some new friends of ours have also applied and are looking to join us uh, potentially by the end of the year. Um, pray for God's leading for that and that God make a way for it all to happen. Uh, wonderful, beautiful family, solid folks, and we'd love to have uh, uh, have them with us uh, hand-in-hand uh, doing the Lord's work here uh, among the Italian people. They already speak Italian, which is a huge benefit as well. Uh, pray for this, the, the first homeschool uh, end-of-year exam, that it would go well. The first uh, homeschool end-of-year exam, that's in June, uh, I think the 12th or 13th. Uh, learning experience for all of us, but we have people co- kind of coaching us how to do it. Uh, but pray that it be a good, positive experience and that it goes well, and we learn all that we can so we can also pass it on to others in the future. Another prayer request, Vera Vita, True Life, the, the gospel content creation, track distributions, and evangelism leading to new contacts and sound conversions. Pray for that up until we leave to go visit the States. Uh, we're going to be continuing that as well. So pray that it continue to remain fruitful and we can see God uh, save souls through that. God given strength, another prayer request, to persevere and boldness to keep preaching and teaching God's word. Another prayer request, increased and ongoing uh, monthly financial support. Uh, The ministry as a whole uh, is in need of new partners at at this time. Uh, The cost of things have gone up, and uh, we haven't been back to the States to see people, so I think uh, out of sight, out of mind, people have perhaps forgotten uh, or or aren't aware of the need in Italy. So just in any case, um, pray for more partners to come on board and keep this ministry uh, going uh, further and uh, deeper into... uh, Italy into the hearts and minds of of families and souls and so on. If you are an Italian uh, person in the States and you've made millions of dollars and you want to see Italy reached, uh, reach out to us as well. Uh, We'd happily uh, uh, receive uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to really get stuff going over here in the country of Italy. Uh, So if if that's you and you just happen to have uh, more money than you know what to do with, please don't hesitate to reach out as well. We'd be happy to uh, receive it and put it to good use uh, for reaching more Italians. Uh, provisions. Uh, finally here, provisions, uh, a larger home and or facility for PMC in Italy that lets us host more people, missionaries and events. Uh, we're, we're back and forth whether or not that's a good idea, uh, but pray for us for wisdom for that and provisions uh, to either we need a, a home that we can accommodate more people or a facility that can accommodate ministry, home, everything all in one uh, and, and really increase stuff. But now I have some hesitation because there's Taxes are like unbelievable in the country of Italy, and I don't want to get us into any um, problems. But on the other hand, there, God makes a way, and those things have a, have an impact of its of its own as well, and adds uh, 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 legitimacy to the the movement of God here through the ministry and what we're doing, uh, having a facility of sorts like that. So something to pray about. We encourage you to pray uh, for us about that, and pray about that as well. And lastly, souls that are hungry for God's word and the body of Christ. Pray that God give us souls, more souls that are hungry for the Word, uh, desiring the the Word above all else, the truth that sets free, and uh, the body of Christ, the brothers and sisters in Jesus to go through life with. Pray that God do a supernatural and special work in that regard. This was episode number 300, uh, everybody. Uh, episode number 300. We hope to be back next week, Lord willing, if Jerry V's feeling well and all the other stuff comes into place. We have numerous uh, things uh, in the pipe coming up. Uh, one will be uh, a, a, a part of a lesson for uh, the, the missions course at the, at the Academia, uh, where we're going to be talking just defining biblical missions. How can we define missions today? It's this uh, idea that's growing and molding and taking shape all the time. There's the simple understanding. There's the big understanding that God is doing a mission in our world. How does it actually look like? What does biblical missions look like? It really, what are the kind of missions we should get involved in? These kinds of things. Uh, that'll be coming up as well. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys. And uh, God bless you. And until the next time, uh, take care and God bless. Ciao, ciao.